Hi y'all. I am on my way to teach. And I was thinking as I was driving um, in this morning that I would do this vlog type entry to sort of, you know, put you into a day in a life of that kind of thing. It's Saturday, we're up early, went and got groceries. And, uh, yeah, at seven. <laughs> in any case, um, I was thinking uh, about how people approach private lessons. And I guess there's two ways to approach private lessons, and I probably do both, depending on the type of student. Uh, I am of the mind that private lessons are an ongoing conversation. Uh, you know, we, we have a conversation, we do some stuff, and then next, you know, I, I give you something to do, and then next week you come back, and then we continue where we left off in the conversation. Uh, hopefully you've brought something to the table new in the conversation because you, you know, work on the stuff that we thought you should work on. Uh, and so we have this sort of s continuous conversation uh, methodology. Now, the other way is more episodic, where you work on this thing this time and this thing the next time and this thing the next time. I think a lot of times when we get into episodic, though, now some people teach that way, and that's fine. Uh, what, what happens is that we leave steps out. And we don't necessarily master anything or get a full understanding of anything. So I, I'm of the mind that if you are taking private lessons, in-person in private lessons from an instructor, that it be more of this converse, this ongoing conversation. Uh, this conversation of, you know, where are we today? Uh, where did we get done this week? The, the thing that I, I, the first thing I ask most of my students is play for me what you practiced. This is how I know that our ongoing conversation is ongoing when I'm not there. Play for me today what you practiced this week. What you practiced. Now, a lot of my students are in high school and middle school, so they have band. And um, so when they have band, of course, they practice their band music. And I'll help them with their band music uh, if indeed it makes sense to do because I want them to be successful where they are. But the idea is what did you practice that we talked about? What are you bringing to the conversation? And that's the responsibility of the student. There is a responsibility of the student. And that responsibility is what are you bringing new to the conversation? We had this conversation last week, and now you are supposed to get conversation out and make some some sense of it, some good of it, uh, work on it, practice it, uh, ingest it, you know, slather yourself in it, what, whatever picture you need. Uh, and so, so later that next week, we can now we can now talk about it, and we can and I can check up on you. Uh, well, how did you think this went? Did you understand this? Were you able to blah, 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 blah? We can have that conversation that continues. Um, and I think that's, I think that's an important, uh, important step. All right. So we are headed in. We, sh my, uh, my first student is at 10 o'clock and it is quarter after nine. We shall be there in a little bit. And when we get there, we'll pick you back up. Right. Well, we're uh, we're here. We're here early. My my, my student is until ten o'clock, and there's the door to my studio. So, the door's already been already been unlocked. And here we go. There's my big comfy chair. That's what I that's what I teach. And there is my instrument. There you go. Uh. My keyboard, which I have not hooked up, because I can't. Why? Because I cannot find the uh, the power cord. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh yeah, and that that's my bass. And over there is a that's not a tenor. It's a C melody that it, that is in need of some repair. I got it from a neighbor. And next to it is a sopranino. And next to that is is a Jupiter soprano, which is 
in horrific shape and unplayable at, at, at the moment. But the most important thing right there in the room, that's right, is the Keurig. All right, well, uh, my student will be here in a little while. What I like to do, and she's a flu student, so what I like to do is try to warm up a little bit. Let me flip you around. I, I, I like to try to warm up a little bit before they get here. Um, because I think, sorry, I think that's important. Uh, that way I can have some sort of some sort of tonal center before they get here. So what I'll do is first I'll warm up my head joint because it's freezing. And the tone that you ought to get from your head joint is either an A or an A flat, right? Uh, I try to, I, I don't want to play sharp, so I guess I'm closer to A flat. Uh, I guess there's a lot of falder all about that, kerfuffle about all that, but I try to play an A flat with my head joint. That gets this flute pretty much close to being in tune all the way through the rest of the scale. So I'll warm up a little bit, and I always go down to the lowest note. Because that lets me relax a little bit. And so on, as opposed to and and warming up my my air factory and 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 getting some warm air into the instrument, getting some control, and again at the same time not hopping into something intense because I want to make sure that I that I keep my embouchure nice and relaxed because um, it's going to be a long day. I have, to, I have to I have to teach all day. My first lesson is an hour. Um, my second lesson is an hour. Uh, so I, and that's what I try to, that's what I try to do when I get here and, um, try to be prepared for the student when they get here. Uh, I, she is a, um, my first student is a middle school student and I know that she has some, uh, middle school band stuff to, to, to work on and as well as a, uh, and an A2 that, that her and I are, are working on. And of course, we're always working on scale stuff. Always. Always working on scale stuff. All right, so we'll we'll get back. We'll, we'll we'll pick you guys back up after the first lesson or after the second lesson or sometime today for sure. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, we have a cancellation, so we're taking a little break. Um, you know, it's it's funny. Both of my students so far today have um, either been on break. Or for some reason, haven't continued the conversation. So when that when that happens, what we have to do is that we have to just start a conversation. Um, I I've had both of these students long enough to know uh, what their level is, and we just started off at a pain point on both of them. Um, and for one of them, the, the, uh, the flute pain point is our low notes, especially if you're a beginning player. And then note recognition was the other, a, a young clarinet player. Uh, so we, so you just have, so I just have to start off at a pain point, the point where I know that this is something that they don't do well. Let's just start here because that, of course, two things happen. You get to work on the thing that they don't do well, and that's what we're here to do. And you also get to sh sort of show them without without showing them how important uh, daily practice is and when they are a young player how much they how quickly they could lose what they've gained if they don't maintain it it sort of it sort of points the finger at them without actually pointing a finger at them so we'll take a little break and we'll be back at it in a little bit we'll pick you up on the other side all right. Well, 
this is actually the next day. Um, it was a it was a great day um, today, well, yesterday. I actually got a new student, young saxophonist, and um, or saxophonist as we like to say in the profession. Um, good young man. I met his dad. Great, great guy. I'm looking forward to being his his teacher. And um, here's the deal. The deal with um, being a um, a private music teacher is I like to equate it to this. <clears throat> I know. On my other channels, whenever I have a sports analogy, everybody goes, oh, my God, there he goes again. But, oh, here, here I go again. Is <clears throat> I don't know if you know or not, but on most sports teams, uh, especially professional sports teams, there is a strength coach. And all that strength coach does is make sure that the athletes are strong enough to play the sport that <clears throat> they're in. <clears throat> They've lifted enough weights. They've done enough Pilates. They're, whatever the thing is, that they've done enough. And that's what I am. That's what private teachers are. Private teachers are strength coaches. I don't get to call plays. I don't get to decide what tunes they play in band or what they, you know, or, or what marching band shows they do. I don't get to do any of that. Uh, what I get to do is prepare them for it to make sure that their skills are up so when they participate in these activities, they can participate successfully. Uh, and then I, and then I am some small part of their development. And especially when you have um, kids, it's especially exciting to see them grow as musicians and as young people. Uh, I've been doing this almost 40 years. 30, this is my 39th year. And uh, longer than I've done anything else in my life. And I just, I can't foresee a time where I'm not doing it at some level. I just can't foresee a time where I'm not doing this. So <clears throat> there's my day. It finished up nicely. I got home and, uh, you know, got something to eat and went to bed early. <laughs> and uh, and I'm looking forward to the next day. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, Monday, uh, to doing it again. It's one of the things, that, it's the only job that I've had <clears throat> that I have never not looked forward to. And I understand that that's a blessing. Not everybody can say that. It is the only job that I've that I've had in my life, and I have been working since I was sixteen at some job. Never have I had a job that I have never had a day where I didn't look forward to going. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, so that's why I like bringing you these videos. Of the things that I do, things I teach, and and when I and why I talk so much during the video, <clears throat> because I want I really want you to get it. I really want you to grow. I really want you to develop. So again, thanks for spending some time with us um, at the Saxophone Factory. Um, there is now announcement, announcement, announcement. Uh, a saxophonefactory.com website, and right now the only thing that's on it right now <clears throat> are these videos depending on how much you think it's a good idea and how much people use it, then I can start, <clears throat> excuse me, start developing the website, <clears throat> maybe putting things on it like PDFs or the stuff I do and uh, special videos for people who subscribe, all sorts of stuff that's possible. But I won't know if you want that unless you actually go to saxophonefactory.com. Uh, factory, that's www.saxophonefactory.com. Uh, again, right now, only, the only thing that's on that on that channel are these videos, and they will rem they will continue to be on on that channel uh, <clears throat> because it may be easier at some point to get to that than necessarily type in YouTube. Now, that's going to just take you to these videos on YouTube, so I don't know what your internet situation is, um, but anyway, at least you'll get an idea. Uh, and hopefully, they'll hopefully soon, depending on on the interest, there'll be more stuff there um, too. So, there you go, saxophonefactory.com. Alrighty, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, keep practicing. Bye-bye now.